Hello, welcome to the complete web scrapping course using Node.js and Selenium. My name is Jazib Akram and I'll be your instructor inside this course. Let me tell you what is web scrapping. Actually, web scrapping is a technique to obtain structured data from various websites using an automated tool. And in our case, our tool will be Node.js and Selenium. This course is for complete beginner and we will be building many projects at the end of this course. In the first project, we will make this translate.google.com automated. It's a real time project. So for this project, we will get one file from our client translations.csv in which we will have two columns. The first column will have the text which our client want to translate into some other language. And in the second column, we will have the language name. So we will take this file from our client and we will make this translate.google.com automated. Let me show you how. So if I run my end project file, we will put client data on this website and then choose the desired language and translate it according to that language. And after converting every text into desired language, we will create another file translated data.csv in which first we will have the original text in the first column, language name in the second column and in the third column we will have the translated text. So this will be our final file that we will provide back to our client and it will have all the validations according to translate.google.com. Now this Google Translate project is divided into two parts, Google Translate 2018 and Google Translate 2019. Actually Google Translate 2018 had a completely different user interface. The DOM elements were different. The page was built on a different structure. But in Google Translate 2019, they have enhanced the user interface, also the page structure. That's why we will create two separate projects for Google Translate 2018 and Google Translate 2019. All the code inside these two version will be completely different. And I believe that for web scrapping learning process, it's a best course you can ever find on the internet because you will know how companies are shifting from one user interface to another and how to tackle a project in a complete new shift. And one more reason why I choose this translate.google.com it's because Google is a billion dollar company which creates most sophisticated web pages on the internet. So if you can learn how to scrap one of the best pages available on the internet, you can scrap any website out there. And then in the second project, we will scrap one travel insurance website. It will also be a real world project. So this website give insurance code to people. It has multiple trip option, multiple destination to select from and every single option has a different price packages. So we will make this website completely automated based on our real world client. And at the end, we will provide one Excel file to our client that will have information about different packages and their associated prices. So the things which you will learn inside this course will help you scrap different social media websites, scrap email and contact list and also you can scrap e-commerce websites out there. Now before taking this course you should have a basic knowledge of HTML and basic programming knowledge is required. There is no knowledge required of Node.js inside this course. I will show you each and everything in complete details. Feel free to explore this course and I will see you inside this course. Hello, my name is Jazib Akram and I'll be your instructor throughout this course. I'm helping thousands of students online and congratulations, you are one of them. In this course, we will learn about web scrapping. Actually, web scrapping is a technique to get the data from website through an automated way. This course is divided into three parts. In the first part, we will set up our environment. In the second part, we will see the basic syntax of 
web scrapping using Node.js and in the last part we will build two real world projects. Now before enrolling into this course there are no special requirements except for basic HTML knowledge along with basic programming knowledge. No knowledge of Node.js required in this course. I will show you each and everything with complete details. Hello, welcome to this course of web scrapping by using Node.js. My name is Jazib Akram and I will be your instructor throughout this course. In this movie, I'm gonna give you some knowledge about Node.js framework if you are not familiar with it. So let's get started. So what is Node.js? Actually, Node.js is a server-side scripting language that runs on multiple platforms. You can install it on Windows, Macintosh, Unix and Linux based systems. And it's completely free and open source. You can download it without paying anything. And Node.js compiler was written on C++. And basically Node.js is a runtime built on Chrome's engine. If I go specific, it was version 8 JavaScript engine. JavaScript engine is the one which converts JavaScript code into low level code, which a machine can easily understand. This engine information is completely out of the scope of this course. So if you want to look up, you can visit this link developers.google.com slash v8. And Node.js is a single threaded, which means there is no input output blockage. It's even driven means it can process multiple requests at a same time. For example, you are fetching a data from your database and at the same time you can get a response from the other side of your script without any wait. The extension of Node.js is .js, same as JavaScript. And the current version of Node.js as per 1st October 2018, 10.11.0. But always go for the stable version because it might be possible that there are some bug which has not been fixed in the latest version. And in case of an issue, you can always find a great support if you go for stable version. Now in the last slide, I said Node.js is a single threaded, which means it can handle multiple requests at a same time, which indicates it is asynchronous in nature. Asynchronous means you request for something, you get the response instantly without any wait. Let me show you how asynchronous request and response look like in a real world example. So here I'm on my Instagram account. You can see this heart right here. If I click on this heart, this heart has filled with red color. I request for filling this heart and the response was so much quick. And if I click again, the red color has gone away. So this type of request and response where you don't have to wait at all is called asynchronous request and response. So why should you choose Node.js? First and foremost, you can build real time complex applications by using Node.js. And the great thing about Node.js, it's very easy to code. I will show you how as far as web scrapping is concerned. And it can perform all database related operation. If you are planning to use Node.js as a server side language, you can do every single kind of database operation. You can create, read, update and delete and manage your database on a fly. And it's fast, efficient and scalable. And scalable means the size of application does not matter in Node.js. And as I said before, it can handle multiple requests at a same time due to its asynchronous in nature. So now in the next movie, we'll be installing Node.js on our system. So see you there. So in this movie, we will be installing Node.js on our system. So here I'm on website nodejs.org and for Windows download, we have two buttons right here. First one is recommended for most user 8.12.0 and the other one is for latest version.
as I said before always go for recommended one so click on this recommended one and this one is downloading right here after download double click on the downloaded file click next accept next now I'm installing it on C drive it's completely up to you whether you want to install it on your main C drive or you want to install it on any other drive but if we install this node.js at C drive it means that it will be globally installed and we can access node.js anywhere from our computer so it's better to select C drive at the time of installation so that you can globally access node.js from any of the drive so click next next click on finish it has been installed now for checking whether you have installed your node.js or not you have to bring on your command prompt because we run our node.js files through command prompt so I'm gonna give one command npm space dash v and it has given me 6.4.1 which is npm version npm is node package manager which we are gonna cover in our upcoming movie so I'm gonna explain all of the npm in our upcoming movie so by giving this command it has given me npm version it means that we have installed node successfully and in case if you are facing some problems while issuing this command at the first time you have to go to your C drive locate program files where you have the folder of node.js let me see here it's right here and you have to run the exe file in case if you run into some problem and after issuing this command npm v you are not getting the npm version so just click on this node.exe and that's it it's a counter measure so we have installed node.js on our system and in the upcoming movies we will be explaining npm and more about this command prompt in this movie i will be explaining npm npm means node package manager and it's for it's for installing updating and deleting node modules there are two ways of installing modules locally and globally the syntax is very simple all you have to do you have to write npm install and then you have to write package name it will install your module locally and if you want to install your module globally you just have to add dash g or double dash global before adding your package name and it will install the module globally for example there is this module fs which we used for file related operations so if you want to install this module you have to issue command npm install fs and if you want to install this module globally where you can access this module from any of the location then you have to write npm g install fs and in case if you want to uninstall some module you can issue command npm uninstall and then you have to mention the package name so in this case if i want to uninstall my module of fs then i can issue command npm uninstall fs in case if you want to update your module there are two ways first command will be npm outdated it will list down all the installed packages and their current versions and latest version as well and also you can issue command npm update that will eventually install the latest version of installed packages but remember one thing when you are issuing these two commands if you already have the latest version you won't be able to see any difference on the screen so these command will only show you some result in case if these command actually changes something or updated something now the next question is when we install module where these module resides for example if i issue command npm install fs 
then Node.js will create a new folder with the name of Node underscore modules. This folder will contain all the modules that you are gonna install. As we will be focusing on web scrapping inside this course, so we'll be using only two Node modules. First one is Selenium Web Driver and the second one is FS. Now let's install these modules and also let me show you how you can work with command prompt when you have to install modules and issue npm commands. So let's install node modules which we need. So here I am on my E drive and inside here I have this folder web scrapping where we'll be adding all the files of this course. So you have to bring first of all your command prompt to issue commands. So npm dash v or double dash v it will give you the version now as you can see we are inside c drive and we have this folder in the e drive so instead of doing all the directory changing operations here the best way is to bring windows powershell so i'm gonna close this one because powershell will change the directory and open the command prompt in my existing directory without any command. So from your keyboard, press Ctrl, Shift and right click. Open PowerShell window here. And here you can see I'm inside web scrapping folder inside E drive. If I give it command npm dash v or double dash v. Here is node version. That's the benefit of installing Node.js from that's the benefit of installing Node.js inside your C drive so that you can access it from any of your folder location. So next thing is I'm gonna install one package that we need inside this course and that is npm install then mentioning the package name selenium dash web driver press enter it has installed this package and here now you can see it has created this folder node underscore modules now for the second one I'm gonna issue command npm install fs for file related operations it's installed and inside this node module you can see we got fs folder right here and in case if we want to uninstall any of the module all we have to do we have to write npm uninstall package name fs so it has removed one package from our node underscore modules if i can show you real quick we don't have fs here anymore so we do need this package so i'm gonna add it again npm install fs so rechecking again here is our package fs so this is all for installing modules recap is Throughout this course, whenever we have to run Node.js files, we are going to use command prompt or PowerShell. But for writing Node.js script, we do need some editor, which we'll be installing in the next movie. For web scrapping, we do need command prompt to run our Node.js application. But for writing Node.js script, we need some editor. There are many useful editors available on the internet which you can use to write Node.js code. You can pick Sublime Text, Notepad++, Visual Studio Code, WebStorm, or Atom, or whatever editor you want. And you can easily download any of the editor from the internet. So here I'm on sublimetext.com. If you want to use this editor to write Node.js, you can download it from sublimetext.com website. 
you can also go for this Komodo IDE. It's also one of the most popular editor. You can also go for this WebStorm. You can pick Visual Studio Code editor or you can pick Notepad++. It's completely free. It's not going to make any difference at all if you pick some fancy editor like Komodo or some simple one like Notepad++. But if you go for more interactive editor, it will help you to debug and organize your code in more readable form. For this course, I will be stick with this Atom editor. You can go to atom.io. You can download it for free. It's also popular in programmers. So download this editor or any of the editor you want. What matter most is how much you committed with this course. So download any of the editor and I will see you in the next lecture. In this section, we will look into web scrapping and some other core concepts and all the fundamental of coding that we need to scrap any website in order to obtain information. So first question is why we need web scrapping. It's because getting data manually from website and then saving it into some file like Excel file is hard and time consuming, right? Because you have to go through the whole web page, copy the data that you need one by one by control C and control V. And you can do that if you have to collect just 10 records. But what if someone asks you to scrap 1000 record? Can you do copy paste in that scenario? No, you wouldn't. If someone does that, that person is an idiot because he's spending more his time on copy paste rather than looking for some alternative solution to make this whole process automated. So better way to do it is by using web scrapping. So web scrapping is a technique to obtain structured data from various websites through an automated way. And for web scrapping, we need Selenium tool and Node.js coding to work with Selenium. Now, here are a couple of examples of web scrapping. For example, you can scrap social media website data like Facebook, Twitter. You can get the trending data, scrap contact details, including email, addresses, phone, number, name, countries, etc. from any of the website. You can scrap e-commerce websites to obtain useful information about some products. And all of the information that we will be getting from the website will be completely legal because you are accessing public information. You are not hacking into their website. You are just getting those information which these website has publicly relieved. Now let's see the fundamental part of web scrapping. First, we will hit some website URL, the website from where you want to get the data. The second part will be the coding part using testing tool like Selenium in our case. And the third part will be saving the obtained data in a database CSV file or an Excel file. So throughout this process, keep these three fundamental rules in your mind. First, get website URL. Second, do the coding part. And third, must save the obtained data in some readable format. Now, suppose you have made your mind about the website where you are going to fetch or extract some data. You got the URL. Now the coding part will start. And for the coding part, we need Selenium. So what is Selenium? Selenium is an automated tool that provides various elements to interact with the web page. And by these elements provided by Selenium, we can perform various operations to get data from HTML DOM. DOM means document object model. If you have worked with JavaScript, you must be familiar with DOM, like finding some element, list of an element, finding the ID of your P tag, finding the class of your div tag, finding the name of your button, what's the class name and xpath, etc. Now, as these DOM elements are on some specific web page and we access our web page by web browser, so we do need some web driver to interact with our web browser. You can use any of the browser you want 
but in this course i will use chrome driver for testing purpose you can download the chrome driver from this link let's download it so here i'm on this website chrome driver dot storage dot google apis dot com slash index dot html and from this website we can download our chrome web driver so i'm gonna scroll down to the stable version according to my computer so it's 2.37 and i have windows as an operating system so i will download this chrome driver 2.37 for windows or it's downloading now after download extract the file in the same folder where you have installed node modules so i'm in my e drive inside web scrapping folder and here i have this chrome driver so after extracting you will have this file chrome driver just double click on this file and that's it apart from downloading your chrome driver from this website and then putting it and running it in your directory folder you can also install chrome driver via command line so i'm going to bring my windows powershell here by pressing control shift right click and now let's install our chrome driver via npm command the command that we need is npm install chrome driver and then you have to mention just the version after at the rate sign so i'm going to go with the latest version that is 2.43 hit enter so we installed chrome driver and this time the chrome driver was installed with windows powershell that's why it will install inside the folder of node modules so for couple of lectures i will be using this chrome driver this one and in our project section i will use this chrome driver that we installed via npm command because there will be lot of directories in our project section so if we use this version we have to deal with a lot of directory mess so if we go with this npm install chrome driver version that we installed inside our node modules folder we just have to write one statement so for next couple of movies we will be using this chrome driver and in the project section we will use this chrome driver to avoid the directory problem now this selenium web driver will helps you to navigate around the web page it has three main commands driver.get url driver.navigate.back driver.navigate.forward so driver.get url is for taking the website url as an argument and then open the website on the browser and driver.navigate.back is used to go back of the page if you want to move forward you will use driver.navigate.forward now in the next movie we will locate some web elements using selenium now let's locate the web elements using selenium so the first command is driver.find element we can locate elements in web driver by using the driver.find elements for example if you want to locate some id like employee id then we can write driver dot find element by id and then we have to mention the id name that is employee id and also in case if you want to find the element by class name of btn means button then you can pass the btn as an argument to by dot class individually by id will be like this if you are extracting by class name it will be like this if you are extracting by name for example you have a check box with the name of vehicle 1 and you want to find the element that has the name of vehicle 1 then you can write it like this you can also find the element by tag name h1 h2 h3 or p tag or you can find the element by its x path it looks weird doesn't it but it's not that weird at all let me show you how you can capture the x path now i have searched some query on google and here you can see this will be the link i want to find the x path of this link means where this link the complete php mysql professional course with five projects is listed on google.com 
so I can inspect it after seeing the inspection you can see it has highlighted h3 and if I click right click on the h3 tag and go to copy and then go to copy xpath now my xpath has been copied now if I can paste the xpath right here now this is the xpath of this the complete PHP MySQL professional course with five projects. Now if I open this link so if someone asks you what is the xpath of this the complete PHP MySQL professional course you can simply just inspect it and find the xpath and in case if you want to find the xpath of this tag this subheading learn PHP MySQL just inspect this page this is the div copy and copy xpath and if I can paste the xpath right here which we just copied this is the xpath for this subheading of this page of udemy.com slash the complete php mysql professional course so now you know the xpath let me tell you two types of xpath there are two types absolute xpath with single slash at start like going through each element of the web page like slash html slash body slash div 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 and then going to the p1 and button but it's not recommended way to write xpath because if the web owner change the order of these div you will be lost in the middle of nowhere that's why I always go for relative xpath with double slashes at the start the one which i just show you by google and udemy.com in the last movie we have seen that how to locate element using selenium now we will take a look on some methods provided by selenium to perform various operations after locating them so the first important method that we usually interacted with click click method is used to perform click operation on the web page so you find the element by its id btn now you want to request selenium to do something with that id so in click case we will say click on the button with id btn next method is send keys send keys method is used to enter the text or some value to input text for example you find the element by its id first name and you want to fill that ID or input field with the text Jazib Akram. So you will see input tag filling with Jazib Akram. Next method is get text. Sometime we want to extract some text from website and this is where get text method can help us out. So the get text method return promise which is handled in that method the parameter contain the text returned by the element with an id now what if you have multiple elements on your web page and you want to loop through every single element in that case you can use looping to iterate every single item of your web elements so in our case we got this list of fruits in which we have orange banana and mango so we will find this element by its id of fruits then we will execute one function that will start from 0 to the length of total number of list items elements length so in that function we will use get text so that we can loop through every single item of our parent web element that was fruit so this plus text will put first time orange then banana and then mango here now let's do all of this encoding in our next movie let's start with some basic scrapping example that will elaborate the basic scrapping syntax while doing web scrapping so instead of moving directly toward some real world website i will demonstrate first the scrapping locally where we will scrap one html file which i have in my computer so in the directory of web scrapping i'm gonna paste one file example dot html
if I can open this file, you can see it's a very simple HTML file. We got one input field, we got radio buttons, checkboxes, unordered list, and the selection list. And at last, we got this hyperlink. If I can show you this whole file in my editor, Atom. So this is very simple HTML file. We got input field of name and then we got a couple of radio buttons and checkboxes, unordered list, selection list, and then hyperlink at the end. So we will scrap this file, but before doing anything, I'm gonna elaborate the basic scrapping syntax that you might need in every single scrapping project. So I'm gonna create a new file and I'm going to save this file as scrap example.js. So this will be our node.js file in which we will add the basic scrapping syntax. Now let's start coding. So first we have to add the basic initializer. So I'm gonna add one variable with the name of web driver and this variable will be equal to one built-in function of require that will require our selenium web driver let me make it just a bit bigger then we have to mention the object of our web driver and that object will be dot by on the next line i will add one more variable that will interact with our hardware and in our case our hardware will be the chrome web driver and as we will be using our chrome browser so for browser it will be Chrome and then dot build at the end. Now let me break down these two lines into sublines so that you can understand them properly. And also let's add the comments here in case when you have the coding files, you can understand these files properly and clearly. So first line that I'm gonna divide this line will be here for including web driver. And in our case, it will be Selenium web driver. The next line will be for including the web driver object. And one object have different properties like ID, XPath, class name and name, etc. So by just adding this by is equal to web driver dot by, you can add all the properties of this object later in your code. And those properties will be ID, XPath, class name, name, etc. Now, this part of this variable code will help you to provide interaction with the hardware. And here we are mentioning the browser. And here on dot build, we are opening our browser. And this build will have small b. Let's put this dot on the next line so that it could make much more sense, okay. Now remember the three parts of web scrapping. The first one was getting the URL, second one was coding part, and third one was saving the data that you are getting from web scrapping in a readable format. So for the first step, we have to mention the URL of the file which we are going to scrap. As we will be scrapping this local example.html file so we have to mention its address so for getting the url the command that you need is driver dot get and then you have to mention the file name so in our case it will be example dot html this is our file name i'm gonna make this file path to be absolute one so that when you have this file in other directory, you can easily work with it. So I'm gonna add the absolute path here, file double slashes and concatenating it with 
directory variable two underscore sign dir name so comment will be getting the url and then we will have one function here that will help us to scrap our data from this example.html file so i'm gonna call this function scrap example and this function will have everything every single selenium statement and selenium methods here so for now i'm gonna add just comment here statement for scrapping so this code will be our required chunk then we will have one function that will do the scrapping and at last we will have one more function that will help us to close our browser that we will open here and quit the chrome driver so for quitting the driver i'm gonna define one more function it will be quit driver and this function will have two built-in function driver dot close and driver dot quit so basically this function is closing this driver that we declare for working with the browser chrome and web driver let's add the comment for this function so this function will close and quit the driver after scrapping has been done so this is the basic syntax that you might need in every single scrapping file i will see you in the next movie Sometimes it's important that we have some weight before locating selenium elements and performing some actions on them. The possible scenarios where a selenium weight can help you out will be when the page is not loaded properly or when the AJAX request is in progress. Because if you don't add the weight, selenium weight, and run your script, while the page has not loaded properly you will not see any output so it's better to add selenium weights instead of not getting anything at all in return so adding weight is a countermeasure technique that will make your script up and running for adding the selenium weight we can define one simple function that will take two arguments first one will be the time how many seconds of time we want our script to wait before proceeding to next step and the second argument will be the function now let's do it in the coding file so here i'm going to define one function here with the name of pause this function will take two argument first one will be time and second one will be func name and inside this function we will call one js built-in function that is set time out and that function also take two argument the first one will be the function name and the second one will be the time how many seconds of time you want your function to wait and by default this set timeout function take the value in millisecond and display it in millisecond so we have to multiply our time variable with thousand to make it in second let's add the comment for this function now if you want to apply this set time function on this scrap example you can just mention this function name here at the top and you can pass two parameter first one will be the number of seconds you want your function to wait and the second argument will be the name of the function so in our case it will be scrap example so what we are doing here we are applying two second of wait on our function of scrap example when we are calling it for the first time let's add the comment here and let's also indent our code a little bit if you just simply call this scrap example function the call will be implicit which means this scrap example function will take 
the required time that the system need. But if you call this scrap example function with this pause function like I did here, then the call will be explicit means we provide how much time this scrap example function wait. So this is how we add selenium weight. We added the selenium weight and all the necessary part in this scrap example.js file. So now finally it's time to fill this scrap example function. So first I will start with the comment here. So this scrap example will demonstrate various selenium elements and method. So first before doing anything I'm gonna console dot log to see whether this code is working or not one simple string and that string will be crapping the page now let's check this whole script so we are calling this scrap example function here after two seconds of delay and everything looks fine so I'm gonna save this file and for running this file we have to open our command prompt or window powershell so I'm gonna move to my directory pressing ctrl shift to bring my powershell and here the command I need is node and then mentioning the js file not the html file we have to mention our scrap example dot js file that's it enter See, it opened the browser all by itself and if I can show you real quick we got one console log message here scrapping the page if I change this message to scrapping the page to start scrapping the page and run all of this again node scrap example.js enter it opened the browser and you can see the new message here start scrapping the page which means our code is working completely fine but as you can see this has opened a browser but it's not closing the browser and also we have two windows here because of two requests so what was the advantage of using this function that we added at the end quit driver if this function is not going to close the browser well we have not called this function that's why it's not closing the browser so for using the functionality of this quit driver function we have to call this function so I'm gonna call this quit driver function inside this scrap example at the end for calling this function just mention its name and then we can call it directly but it will close the browser in the blink of an eye and we will not want that because we want to give some time to our browser so that it could work properly so instead of directly calling this quit driver function it will be best if we call our pause function and put this quit driver function inside it and mention the time so I'm gonna put three seconds of time here and in the next parameter we are calling our quit driver function so if I save this one and run my script first close these browsers now running my script again not scrap example.js enter it opened the browser the browser has been closed right after three seconds which means it's working perfectly so everything is working perfectly now in the next movie we will explain how you can fill out this whole HTML file and put the filled data in your command prompt let's add our code in scrap example function so first I'm gonna divide my screen view into two columns so that you can see both of HTML and JS file at the same time and understand the code properly so here I am on this scrap example function and first thing first the first field we have in our HTML file is this input field with the name attribute so for getting this field I'm gonna call selenium element driver dot find element 
this field has the name so we will we can call this field by its name or by its id but it's better to call this field by its id because id is more unique than the name so i'm going to call this field by its id so mentioning the by object and selecting the properties of id and inside here we have to mention the id name and in our case it's just this name so i'm going to mention this name right here and as we want to fill this field so for filling this field we have to mention selenium function that is send keys and the keys the value which we will be entering in this field will be jazib akram instructor let's make these screens in more readable form okay so we find the element and we send some value inside this field next thing you can see we got radio button and since we have name as a gender in all of these field so instead we can capture this field by its x path so for using its x path driver dot find element by dot x path and for this x path first there will be two slashes and then we have to mention the tag type and in our case it will be input then inside brackets we have to mention the value which we want to select out of these radio buttons so first adding the add sign and then select the value that is equal to let's select this second radio button that is female and as it is radio button and radio button we can click on the radio button we cannot add our own value that's why it's called radio button right so we have to call the selenium function of click on this field so all of this statement means find the element by its x path and click on that field the next thing is you can see we got check boxes and both of the check boxes has different name so we can find this whole check box by its name so first thing first first we will driver dot find element and then by dot name because it has the name and then mentioning the name which i want to select so i'm going to select this honda which has the name of vehicle 1 and as it is also a check box which we can select so we have to call the click method the next you can see we got an ordered list and it has a text all the list item has text if you want to select all the list items out of this list because it's a different scenario so we can use looping to iterate from every single list item so first i'm going to just indent this code a bit and next thing we will add driver dot find element and this time it will be elements because this list has three items so instead of using find element we have to use find elements and by id because an order list has the id so by dot id and mentioning the id that is fruits then for iterating this list we have to mention the then keyword and call one function that function will take every single elements now for iterating all the elements we have to use for loop that will start from 0 to the array length array length will be our elements length and then we will run this loop and increment it until the loop is less than the elements length then we will find every single elements that we are iterating and get the text out of these elements and then we have to use one more then that will execute one function 
that will take that text and show that text to us. So we can show that text by console log. So I can say list of fruits and we can add slash n to divide the list in different lines when we will see and concatenating it with our text. So this then has the ending right here. So adding the semicolon here and this then has the ending here. Let's make it nicer. So this belong to this then and this parenthesis belong to this then. Let's indent it. The next element you can see we got a selection list. So we can as you can see the value of this selection list as different option. So we can use same here the X path. So I'm going to copy this whole X path and paste it right here. And now changing this X path for select list because this is the select list. And then it has the ID of cars. So first we will mention its ID and its ID was car and then for selecting one option out of these options we have to mention the option and then the value that we are gonna select so the value I'm going to select will be BMW this one let's indent it a bit the last thing is this hyperlink so first we will get the link by its search query parameter which is just jazib. So the statement that we need is driver dot find element by will be our object and the property that we will be using partial link text and inside here we have to mention the search query parameter that is just jazib. Let's make it jazib one to one. So mentioning the search query parameter jazib one to one here and we want to select the attribute out of it. So dot cat attribute. Let's divide it in second line and the attribute that we want to select is the link attribute that is hr ef and then we will call one promise that is then when you get this attribute this link you should run one function that will take the value out of this attribute and show it to us by console dot log value the value which we are going to get out of this link and that will be this whole link address and semicolon right here because it's a statement so first we got this whole address by search query parameter you can also get this whole address by the link text and for that the statement will be driver dot find element by link text and the link text we got here Jazi Bakram so mentioning the link text here and similarly we want to get the attribute that is href and then we can mention the promise what we want to do with it so mentioning one function that will have the value the whole link value so we missed this parenthesis let's remove it from here and inside this function we will have same thing console.log value and semicolon at the end. If I can add real quick the comment for these two lines. So the partial link means getting the href based on the search query parameter and the second one means getting the href based on anchor tag value using link text and this all of the looping was for getting the text from multiple items. In our case it was list and as we are working locally so I mentioned X path by using double slashes in both of our example so all of this looks good 
Now let's run this code. So for running this code, we have to open our command prompt and node scrap example dot js command enter. First we have to save this file. Now it's saved. Now let's run this node scrap example dot js. See, I'm not doing anything. So in the first console.log we got list items. And here you can see the list item. And then we got this link. And this link belong to this one. And we are getting one error, but we are not sure where we were getting it from because we are getting just one URL here. So if I change the console log to something like first link and concatenate it with value and the second one to be second link concatenating it means connecting it with our value because according to our code we should get two link here and we are just getting the one so I just added a bit of code to find out which one is not working save this one let's run this file again So we are getting the second link, but there is a problem with the first link. Let's see what's the problem with the first link. Yeah, right. Because we changed the search query parameter to jazib one to one here, but we didn't save this file. So make sure when you are changing one thing in one of your file, also do the similar change in the next file. So for now, I'm gonna stick with the similarity without changing anything in both of our file. So we are finding the partial link text, this search query parameter with Jazib with capital J. So let's make it Jazib. If I save both of these files, let's run our script nordicexample.js. It opened the browser, fill out all of the form and gave us the data which we asked for. And we asked for list of fruits, first link and second link. That's it. So in the next movie, I will show you how you can make all of this error into more readable form by exception handling. Because we got the error in this movie, but we didn't know what was the actual error was. It could took a lot of your time while figuring out the error. So it's a better way if we add one exception handling code in our file so that if we run into some problem, we can easily read what the error is all about. So in the next movie, we will adopt one proactive technique to handle exception while doing web scrapping. So for the last time, if I clear all of this out and run Nord, scrap example dot js it has filled out all the form and gave us the information which we asked for all the information which we asked by console dot log if you want to change the time limit you can also change it for example I'm quitting my driver after three seconds. You can make it after seven seconds. If I save this file and run my code. So it filled out all the form, the values I asked for, Jazib Akram instructor, female, Honda, and then it gave me the output. So here you can see in my code, I said, change the name to be Jazib Akram instructor. Click the value to be female, click the vehicle one, which was Honda and then list all the fruits and then select the BMW from the list and give me these two addresses. So first it will select all the values which I asked for 
and then quit the browser right after eight seconds or I think it was seven seconds. Yeah, it closed the browser after seven seconds. So this was the simple scrap example where you scrap one page and get the required information and select the things of your web page according to your need. Hello, congratulations on finishing one hour of content out of 7.5 hours of content. Now, your journey does not stop here. Everything I told at the beginning of this course, we are going to complete it. We are going to scrap Google Translate 2018 website. Then we will scrap Google Translate 2019 website. And at the end, we will scrap one travel insurance website. But I cannot put all of the course content on YouTube. It's because I believe that it's very distracting for YouTube viewers to see YouTube ads when they are trying to focus and learn something. That's why I completely disabled YouTube ads option on all of my YouTube videos. But I cannot do it all on my own. You have to support your instructor. These type of online video lectures require months of hard work in form of gathering content, recording videos in such a way that the viewers can easily understand and the hours on the process of video editing. So I will ask you a very little thing in return. Now you already watched one hour of content out of 7.5 hour of content. So right in the description of this video, you will find one link. So by clicking on this link, it will redirect to one page where you will find all the content of this course. Here you can see the full 7.5 hour content and I already add the discount on this link which you will find in the description of this video. You can also use YouTube 50 coupon on this website udemy.com where you can purchase this course just for $11.99. So on this platform you will get 92% off on this complete web scrapping course with projects and you can also ask me questions on this platform and I will get back to you. Now you are coming from YouTube and you already watch one hour of content out of 7.5 hour of content. So let me tell you where should you start on this platform. So when you will come on this platform udemy.com in the section of basics of scrapping, you already watched this video of quitting browser. So you can start from this lecture of writing method on this platform udemy.com and you can use this YouTube 50 coupon that will be available here as well to get the 92% off discount on this course. You can ask me questions and I will get back to you on your web scrapping problems and also you can find the coupon of this course on my website jazebakram.com in the course coupons tab. You will find all of my courses here on this tab of coupons on jazibakram.com and here you will find the link for this course of complete web scrapping course with projects. I have many courses on web development. You can find all of my courses including building responsive website, regular expression and PHP on my website jazibakram.com and you can also find the discounted links on my YouTube channel Jazibakram. So must subscribe my YouTube channel. Now let's not waste our time. Just click on this link in the description of this video and let's start our journey from where we paused. So click on this link for the full course and now let's build our real world projects scrapping Google Translate 2018, scrapping Google Translate 2019 and completely scrapping one travel insurance website. So just click on this link and I will see you in the rest of the course.